very much, Jeff. And uh, thank you very much to the Crescent team for joining. Uh, I promise this will be uh, some interesting information we review. Uh, Going to cover a lot in the course of the next 40 minutes to an hour. So please, as Jeff said, feel free to enter your questions in. But most importantly, all of this content we have in the background. So if you guys need anything else, always feel free to reach out to our team and we'll get you that information. So again, my name is Andrew Tadoni. I'm one of the senior managers here at Leviton, responsible for industrial products. The primary focus of what I'm going to be discussing today is going to be our Lev series launch, which is our new launch of our IEC 60309 devices, otherwise known as pin and sleeve devices. So we'll just dive right in. I'm going to start by um, just running through the agenda. Um, and again, a lot of information we're going to cover, but uh, promise we have all of this, this loaded on our website, all information literature available. Um, and I'll go slow to kind of cover some of the key points here. Do want to spend some time talking about the overall offering, uh, the features and benefits, what we did from a design standpoint to simplify the installation. Um, spend a little bit of time talking about uh, how we improved the um, environmental ratings and made the product a little bit tougher than it was before. And then most importantly, I want to spend a lot of time today talking about um, how we improved safety and productivity with our inform technology. That's going to be the primary focus of the discussion. Uh, inform technology, very exciting platform that we've launched uh, here at Leviton, you're seeing it now in some of the industrial devices, but it's going to be embedded in a lot of commercial and industrial devices in the very near future. So a lot more to come with Inform technology. Uh, spend a little bit of time at the end uh, also touching on some common applications. A lot of this stuff you might know, but I like to um, just connect the dots on where these are most commonly used, uh, how you should talk to certain customers. And then in the end, of course, we'll open it up for questions. So diving right in, starting with um, the offering itself, uh, I try and keep this at the highest level possible because it can get very confusing when you talk about IEC 60309 devices. Pin and sleeve devices in general are, are referred to in several different ways. Um, can be plugs and connectors, uh, can be IEC devices, 60309 devices, pin and sleeve devices. The key thing that I always like to remind people is that um, pin and sleeve devices, not just ours, but everyone's, are made up of two categories. Uh, your plugs, connectors, inlets, receptacles, and back boxes, which um, those are self-explanatory products. Um, and then, of course, the mechanical interlocks, which are the enclosures that you see on the right side of the screen. Those two products together make up a pin and sleeve category. We have a full offering that we're going to be talking about today. But before I jump into it, I want to spend a couple minutes just talking about what a mechanical interlock is. Again, plugs, connectors, uh, inlets, receptacles, you guys I'm sure have sold a ton of those, very straightforward. Um, when it comes to a mechanical interlock, uh, these products aren't as commonly used as a plug or connector. So I'll just take a couple minutes and explain what their value is. When we talk about interlocks, we're referring to uh, an enclosed switch with a receptacle at the bottom of it. That is, you can see in the picture, a plug will eventually insert into. The selling feature of a mechanical interlock over a disconnect or some other uh, switch out there is that it has safety protocol uh, embedded into the device. That's the interlock feature. You can't turn this device into the on position until a plug is fully inserted and you can't rip that plug out until the plug, the uh, interlock itself is turned into the off position. Off position, the switch obviously isn't pushing any power out. It's a safety feature. There'll be no arcing. It literally kills all power before you're gonna unplug that particular plug from the device. So that safety piece is huge. Um, we're seeing more and more of these in food processing, seeing them in a lot of different industries, but anyone that has uh, a focus on safety is starting to look towards mechanical interlocks. The other area that we're really seeing these uh, starting to pop up in is portable manufacturing. So think about 
Uh, again, I'll stick with food processing facilities, but somebody makes one particular piece of food today, uh, they want to process something else tomorrow. A mechanical interlock can be housed all around your facility. It allows you to drag equipment right up to a location, plug it in, energize it, do what you have to do, then eventually turn the product off um, and, and store whatever that machinery is and roll in something new. Um, it's become very, very popular. Uh, large facilities don't have to expand out their facility. They can work with what they have in the space that they have if they start to utilize mechanical interlocks. So again, we're having a lot of success with these. I always, at the start of the presentation, like I said, like to spend a couple minutes just talking about these devices because they are foreign, not just to a lot of our sales team, but a lot of our customers as well don't even know that these exist. So good thing to mention. When we talk about uh, the Lev series, and that, again, um, you're going to hear me refer to the Lev series often throughout the presentation. That is our new tag for our uh, updated self-manufactured pin and sleeve devices. Our Lev series, when we focused on self-manufacturing these, we, we've been in this game for a while. We wanted to upgrade what we had, focused on three key areas. Uh, first and foremost, simplifying the installation. These devices are not the easiest to install. Um, and that's not just Levitin's, that's pin and sleeve in general. It's a lot of screws. They're available in 20 amp all the way up to 100 amp. So they do get larger in size. One installation can take time for an end user. We focused on how can we make it easier and faster for, for the end user to install the product. While we did that, the number two focus, of course, was uh, all good and great, we're making it faster, but we can't lose that durability piece, that industrial look and feel. We want to make sure that it can still take abuse, that you could drop this thing on the floor, you could drag it through a facility, and most important, um, it can get wet, it can get uh, sprayed down in several different manners. Um, we've upgraded our watertight ratings from where they are, and I'll talk about all of that in upcoming slides. And then lastly, again, probably the most exciting thing that we've inserted into uh, this, this new product offering is um, improving our safety and productivity with Inform technology. So you're hearing a lot of buzzwords in the industry right now, um, preventative maintenance, predictive maintenance, uh, IIoT, the industrial internet of things. A lot of facilities want not just the ability to have devices that can handle abuse, but they want to know what's going on in those devices, tie them into their systems, um, get real-time alerts. People are getting, and, and manufacturing facilities are getting more and more sophisticated. And this used to just be the big ones that we all know and love, you know, the Tysons of the world, the Hormels. Um, yes, their facilities are gigantic. You go into some of them, they spend a lot of money because they have that money to spend. But there's also a lot of smaller facilities now that are looking for ways to get a lot more efficient. Inform technology is going to help them do that. And I'll talk through all of that uh, in, in some upcoming slides. Starting with the simplified installation, um, spend a couple minutes here just going over some features and benefits. I touched on this already, but that faster assembly. So how did we do it? This was, again, a key point for us, getting it in the end user's hand and knowing that they could install our product faster than the previous design that we had, but also a lot faster than our competitors that are out there. We've gotten rid of mostly all of the screws that used to be uh, in the back clamp area of a pin and sleeve device. That's where a lot of the older screws would, would harbor. So we've gotten rid of those, and you can see we have now a quick lock pin that works with a threaded feature. Customer gets this product, they can easily thread that back clamp off, they can pull their wiring in as needed, and when they're ready to go, they snap the, uh, the clamp back on and their wiring assembly is pretty much done. Of course, they have to wire up the contact carrier as well, but that back clamp is what took the most time from an assembly standpoint. With this threaded feature on what we did here, we really believe that we've significantly increased, uh, we significantly reduced the overall assembly time for our end users. And we have two ways that we offer this now. So you didn't want to get away from the standard clamp, which is the plug that you see in orange there. Um, that saddle clamp design, as it's called, is very popular. You see the two screws there. We do offer that. We also have an alternate screwless clamp that is a, a, a true screwless design you will, just like you would on, on the design I just showed, 
thread off that back clamp. There's an internal strain relief that while you're tightening down that clamp, it will start to grip the jacket. Once it clicks in place, your internal strain relief is now completely gripping the cord and that provides you your strain relief. Eliminating two additional screws in the back and allowing an end user, uh, other than the contact carrier screws, to literally install this product by hand, which is something that most of our competitors don't offer. We've given this to um, electricians, we've given this to uh, a lot of facilities that we're close with, even had people here do a bunch of tests, ours versus where we were and where our competition is. And we really believe after time studies, we've cut the installation in half from where it was. So think about your OEMs, think about those customers that are installing a ton of these, that time savings is, is a huge money saver for them and something that we should push. This right here is a look at our 60 amp design. So the previous design here, 20 and 30 amp, 30 amp is available on the market now. 20 amp is coming soon. 60 amp is also av available on the market. You'll see it's more of a two piece housing, but it has the same idea. Gotten away from screws on the front and the back uh, of, the, of the product. So the contact carrier used to have four screws that you would have to torque down. The back clamp would also have four screws. We've gotten rid of both of those and made it a threaded feature. Um, very, very easy for the end user to disassemble this product and then of course reassemble it quickly and go about their day. This is a look, uh, just more of an exploded view of um, the 60 amp product. Showcasing a couple things here, obviously the three piece design, but again, focus on those threads, very easy to install. We also have an inform version, which is our power indication that I'll be talking about later. There's a lot when you look at these designs that uh, you're not going to be able to see when you're just showcasing the product to an end user, pulling it out of a box and showing it to them. Um, the inside of, of the contact carrier, as an example, has a lot of features that you will have to call out. So when we just focus on the contact carrier, we have an exclusive feature in that our terminal screws are captive. So those small screws that you see that torque down the wire, um, if you back those out on anyone else's design a little too far, they will fall out. Uh, we've run into issues on previous designs and I've played around with enough competitive product to know that if you try and take that small screw, put it back in place and thread it where it needs to go, you could potentially cross thread the screw and then you're really having a problem with not even be able to use or complete your installation. We have those captive screws where there's literally a barrier that stops the screw from fully backing out. Um, you will be able to feed your wires in as needed, um, but you'll never have to worry about losing this screw, backing it out too much and cross-threading uh, exclusive feature that we offer. Sounds small, sounds silly, but big deal for uh, end users, especially the ones that are installing a lot of these. Clearly marked contact carriers. Again, most have this. Uh, we laser mark, mark in our, not only the line, the load, where everything is going, but also uh, the ground and the neutral. And then we pad print it for the end user as well. Um, not everyone is installing these devices in a nicely lit room, a uh, studio as an example. Usually they're in dark, um, you know, dull type lighting and they're installing a bunch of these. The pad printing that screams, if nothing else, Here's where your ground connection has to go, just so you get that right. Helps out the end user, and again, makes it a little bit quicker for them. A couple additional features. Uh, we went with the bagged grommet approach. Um, we did this, uh, one of the, the biggest uh, pieces of feedback that we received over the years of being in this industry was um, we had an onion skin grommet, which was a single grommet that we made our end users peel back accordingly. They had all sorts of issues doing this. Uh, there are still a few people out there that do it. If you, if you peel back this grommet incorrectly or you use the wrong grommet, you compromise your watertight ratings. This component seems like it's a small rubber piece that doesn't mean much, but uh, it's probably one of the most important components of the installation of a pin and sleeve device, plugs and connectors. Um, and when you do that, you'll see now we offer a, a bagged grommet approach. So you have several different ones to choose from. We've taken it a step further, made it even easier for the end user so they can select 
Um, on right on the grommet, there's molded in diameters. Uh, they know what their wire diameter is. They can match it up to whatever the molded diameter range is on the grommet, and they could select the proper grommet. You want this to be a snug fit. Um, a lot of our end users often choose the, the wrong grommet. And then, of course, they'll complain down the road and say, um, it's a product issue that water possibly got in here. We made it simpler for the end user, so it screams at them to say, this is the proper grommet you should be using. You don't have to do any work. Just refer to the instruction sheet, or if you know your jacket size, select the proper grommet because it's literally molded right onto that rubber piece. And then lastly, when we're talking about the core devices, plugs, connectors, inlets, receptacles, and back boxes, just focusing and not forgetting about the receptacles and inlets. Only so much you could do with a receptacle and inlet um, when it comes to redesigning them. They're relatively simple products, but we did want to help out our customers uh, by installing the ground wire and most importantly, um, pre-mounting the gasket on the receptacle and inlet. Prior to this, and you'll see this again from, from a lot of the players out there, we used to have the grommet, we used to have uh, a separate component in the box, which was your gasket. It was a peel and stick gasket, so you'd have to peel it off, stick the gasket in place. You'd have to do that correctly, otherwise you would compromise your watertight ratings. We now take care of this. It's controlled. It's in our facility, our manufacturing plant. And again, it's controlled by our quality team to ensure that we put this on, it's put on correctly every single time, and it's one less step that our end users have to do. So I'll shift gears a little bit. Um, I want to spend some time talking about uh, the mechanical interlocks themselves, specifically some of the features and benefits that we've incorporated into these devices. Remember, when we talk pin and sleeve, you're talking about your core devices, the plugs, connectors, inlets, receptacles, and back boxes, and you're talking about the mechanical interlocks. Together, that's what makes up uh, the pin and sleeve category. So when we're shifting gears now and talking about mechanical interlocks, um, a couple small things we did here. Again, you have the enclosure. Um, these products are available now in 30 amp and 60 amp. Um, they do range from 20 amp all the way up to 100 amp. So you can imagine when you get to a 100 amp device, um, it is large in size. We have a bottom hinged feature that allows the end user during installation and repair to let that cover hang accordingly. They don't have to find a place for the cover, uh, sit it on the floor somewhere that could potentially be dirty uh, and then pick it up and reinstall it. We allow them to do their work. All they have to do is let that hang down, take care of what they need to. And then of course, when they're ready to go, they button that cover back up and uh, torque down the screws. The screws themselves, those front cover screws are captive screws. Um, sounds like a small, simple feature, but there are a lot of people out there that if you back that screw out too far, or if you just pull the cover off of uh, the enclosure itself, those screws could potentially fall to the floor. Again, always think about um, food processing facilities or really any manufacturing facility, but I say food processing because they, they do a lot of washdowns. They have a lot of, a lot of grates and, and areas where water can retreat to. Um, if a screw falls on the floor, it's unlikely that you're ever gonna find it in one of those facilities. With all of our enclosures now, we pretty much ensure that uh, there is captive screws available. You could shake this cover as much as you want. You can uh, have it hanging for days. Those screws will not fall out. I wouldn't recommend that you have this thing open for days and um, you know, not using it. You should probably close it just in case. But if you are going to do that and it's hanging, just know that those screws aren't going anywhere. Um, again, nice little feature that we offer to our end users. And lastly, um, adjustable mounting feet. Uh, probably one of the uh, hardest pieces of the installation of a mechanical interlock is mounting the device. Um, most have specific ways that they want to mount it. We give two or three different uh, adjustable uh, locations that lets the end user decide how they want to mount it accordingly. So those feet come with the device. Um, again, just makes it a little bit easier during that step. So we talked a lot about the features and benefits. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the second area that we focused our time on, which uh, are those environmental ratings, that industrial design. How did we improve that? So to give you an overview, um, 
we uh, wanted to make sure that, again, uh, these devices, although are easier to install, didn't lose that industrial look and feel and can still take a beating. We now have uh, the highest and most com comprehensive IP ratings in the industry. I like to explain what these watertight ratings are, and I don't just like to say these devices are watertight because I think if you do that, you're, you're almost dumbing down some of the testing parameters and different applications that each of these IP ratings cover. Um, so when we talk about IP ratings, um, just, just real quick, if you're not familiar, ingress protection. So the first digit, the first number that you see is your protection against dust. So you're going to see six or you, uh, protection against the solid. You're going to see sixes across the board. Um, six is dust tight. So it's literally the smallest particles won't be able to get into the product. The second number that you see, IP66, that second six is your protection against water. Um, so there are several different ways that uh, a device can be exposed to water. So I'll walk through what these different IP ratings mean. IP66, I want you to think of it as just a regular uh, fire hose on a product, a lot of water, being sprayed down on an enclosure or a particular plug or connector. Our products will handle that. That's how a lot of food processing facilities are actually doing washdowns now. They just have a ton of water that's surging through. Um, or if you want to look at it a different way and think about uh, outdoor devices, which these products do live outside, if they're exposed to hurricane type weather, a lot of rain pelting down on the device, IP66 will cover that. IP67 is short-term submersion. So uh, not like an interlock will ever fall underwater, but if for some reason this device were to get submerged, um, let's talk about plugs and connectors as an example. If they were to sit in a puddle or maybe it's a, a pool of some kind, they drop in. As long as the plug is connected to the connector or the connector cap is closed, the product will be safe. You eventually just have to pull it out, out because it is short-term submersion. IP69K is um, high pressure, high temperature washdown. So you see that in the picture to the bottom right. That is the most popular way that facilities now, specifically uh, meat manufacturing facilities, poultry facilities are doing their washdowns. Usually there's chemicals involved. It's a big team that comes in with these pressure washers and they spray down everything. If you don't have IP69K, there's a good chance that you're going to blow gaskets off of your product. You're going to blow uh, the screws. You're going to destroy a cover. We have that rating. Uh, one of the industry exclusive ratings that we've gotten as an IP rating is IP68. This is new to the industry. You might have heard it on some commercials here and there. There are a lot of phone commercials that now promote this, but this is long-term submersion. So a product can literally go underwater, uh, again, we'll say plugs and connectors, uh, for 24 plus hours, long as it's plugged in properly or there's a cap on the connector, uh, even if uh, it's a mechanical interlock, let's say a facility floods, um, your mechanical interlocks, as long as the cap is on the device, you will be able to let that water recede and your products will survive. Um, I don't know how the rest of the facility will be, but the Lev series products will uh, with door, uh, ensure that they'll be able to endure that level of um, water intrusion. So again, IP68, that's an industry exclusive. Everything else you'll see people have pockets of them. Maybe they have IP69K, maybe they have IP66. We have IP68 all the way up to IP69K, all the way down to IP66 and 67. So that's why I say most comprehensive watertight ratings in the market, push these, educate your customers on these because they really do need to understand uh, what the different IP ratings are. Don't just say the devices are watertight. Um, the last piece that I call out, all of our Lev series devices, the core devices and the interlocks are NSF certified. NSF is a sanitary certification. Uh, this is a separate agency group that goes in, they examine a product, and they, uh, they really just look to make sure that there are no uh, nooks and crannies where the dirt and debris can build up on a design. So if they see a lot of gaps, if they see a lot of holes where um, eventually something can get stuffed in and never really cleaned out, they will fail the product. 
We submitted all of our lev series to this agency group um, and they approved it. A lot of people will play with the words um, sanitary design or you'll hear people say that it's um, uh, watertight and, and you know, wash down safe. Um, if you don't see that NSF certification, that logo, that blue logo on there or that tag on the product, they are not NSF certified. So push that. That is a very popular feature now in food processing facilities. When we talk a little bit more about just the construction and um, the robustness of the design, we did get um, our pins used to be brass. A lot of our competitors also use brass pins. We now have nickel plated pins as a standard, um, speaks to the corrosion resistance. They're also self cleaning. Um, but again, if these are in the elements, if they're exposed to salt air, if they're exposed to acidity, these pins will survive a lot longer. Pins and sleeves will survive a lot longer than some of the other products that are out there that only have brass. Um, no spaces around the product. I talked about this before. Really, when it comes to the contact carrier, there are products where uh, you could hold up in the light and actually see through the housing from the contact carrier looking in. Ours is 100% sealed, so water, dirt, debris will not get in there. Um, and we've tested these in the most extreme temperatures from the hottest environments, to the coldest environments. We've dropped them. Um, they survive pretty much everything. So um, one call out I'll say there is there are some competitors out there that um, are using metallic housings. Um, and they think that, you know, it's a very, very expensive product, but the thought process is it's tougher than the uh, non-metallic product. These products, especially ours and the material that we selected, uh, they can take abuse. They can drop from, from um, you know, high up areas, uh, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, they're meant to be dragged, they're meant to be abused. So just know, just because they're non-metallic doesn't mean they're not extremely, extremely tough. Same thing with uh, our mechanical interlocks as well. We chose a very, very tough PVT. These do get knocked into often. Um, I can't promise you that they're going to survive a forklift hitting into them, but they will pretty much survive just about everything else. Uh, these go through that same temperature testing. Um, operating temperature on the inside is probably one of the most important things that we call out here. This can um, withstand the hottest temperatures and again, the coldest temperatures. The switch on the inside itself will be able to operate, turn on and off without any issues. And then small stuff with the, with the mechanical interlock, we have the on-off uh, embossed in there. And I talked about those mounting feet before. This, uh, the mounting feet is actually what gets us that NSF certification. You have to be able to stand a certain amount off of the wall with your product so that people can clean behind the mechanical interlock. So another feature that we have, these do come with the device. Um, again, adjustable, so you can mount in several different ways. So now I want to focus uh, the remaining piece of the presentation on the um, last, probably most exciting piece that we're going to talk about today, which is uh, informed technology and our focus to improve safety and productivity. So starting with the overarching question, what is INFORM? Um, it's a good question, uh, and, and we always describe this the same way. INFORM is not a product. It's a technology platform. So we've created a platform that, of technologies that are meant to be taken and inserted into several different products, uh, industrial, commercial, that we're offering. We're going to build this out. Uh, it's going to evolve over time. But the overarching idea of it is to help uh, end users with real-time notifications, get alerts on what's going on with these devices in their facilities to reduce downtime, uh, make their place a little bit safer, and make it a whole lot more efficient. Getting away from that whole, um, I know my device failed because whatever piece of machinery that my mechanical interlock was operating has now shut down. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to give them a heads up that the device, the mechanical interlock is having some sort of an issue. Here's the issue. Go take care of it before whatever device machine that this mechanical interlock is operating shuts down. 
We're getting away from that. We're helping them out. We're giving them those real-time notifications. What I'm going to go through is um, the start of how we've inserted this into mechanical interlocks. But like I said, there's a whole lot more that's coming, not just with mechanical interlocks, but with a lot of our commercial and industrial products in the future. So when we talk about mechanical interlocks, um, I'm going to explain the lights. I'm going to explain everything you see here. Uh, first and foremost, we still have, and I went over it, a basic version. So if your end users ever want just the uh, basic versions of this product, we will still always have those in the offering. I don't want anyone to think that those are going away. This is, um, think of it as a better best offering where we are going after those customers that are interested in technology. We have two versions of this. One will be local monitoring, uh, visual indication, if you will. If you have a smaller facility, you'll be able to walk the facility. You can visually see the lights. And if you see green, you know everything is good. Uh, if you see red, flashing red, you know that there's an issue. I'll go over this, um, I'll go over this again, but I'll just quickly do it now. What, what's being called out is line and load at the top. So phased indication, uh, ground continuity at the bottom right. And then your top right is sensing liquid accumulation inside the enclosure. So your first way of seeing this, again, local monitoring. Um, anything that if you're walking your facility, you see a red flashing light, you know that there's a problem. Uh, anything that's green, you can know that the device is operating the way that it should be. We also have the step up from that, which is uh, our top tier version, our best, if you will, and that's the remote monitoring via Wi-Fi. This particular version allows uh, real-time notifications to be sent to a phone and also a desktop version that we've created. Uh, so we have our app and we also have our desktop version of the app available free of charge. Um, and it will allow you to log in, load all of your devices onto this app in your facility and get real-time notifications saying not just your device is having an issue, but it will say, this particular device is having a problem. This is specifically what the problem is. Uh, it's getting water inside the enclosure. Go take care of it. The water hasn't reached a critical level where it's shorting anything out yet, but if you don't go and service this, it will eventually short out the device. Allowing whoever it is, the maintenance manager, the facilities manager, the safety manager on the floor, they get that alert. They can get whoever they need to on the phone to go take care of this before they experience that downtime. This is again a free app um, that we're offering to our end users. Um, if nothing else, download the app, play around with it. You can kind of see some of the features and benefits, um, but it is extensive uh, and it's really meant to make that remote monitoring, that real life, uh, that real time notification come to life for our end users. Talking a little bit more on this, I, I touched on the liquid accumulation. This is a look inside the product. So if you look on that bottom there, there is a sensor. If any type of liquid starts building up inside the mechanical interlock, the top right fault sensor will trigger. Now this, this sensor, this LED doesn't trigger in red and say, you're, you're out of luck, this thing is filled up with water, uh, throw, the, throw the device in the garbage. It doesn't do that. What it does is it flashes in yellow as a caution to say, we're detecting some water at the very base level of your enclosure. Go and open this thing up and see what's going on. Most importantly, troubleshoot why water is coming in. If you don't take care of this, eventually this water will climb and get to the switch or some of the wires that could cause a problem. But we wanted to do it in that way to give that caution to say, you got a problem going on in here that you need to address, but we're giving you time to go and do that. Not that, uh, by the way, it failed and the device is no longer good. So that sensing version, that fault monitor that we have focused today on liquid accumulation, um, but it's been a very, very popular feature. You never know who's doing the install of these products. So I, I rattled off. A uh, lot of IP ratings at the start of this saying that we have the best and the most comprehensive. Um, you and I don't do the install of the hub um, that, that brings the, the wiring into the device. If that's not secured properly, water is going to get inside. Um, if it's a meat processing facility that is extremely cold and somebody comes in with uh, a pressure washer, high temperature, 
uh, cold, high temperature, there's just going to turn it into a steam box. That condensation will start to build up inside of the enclosure. There are certain things that no matter how good your watertight ratings are, there's always going to be a scenario where water can get in. And that's why we embedded this feature into our mechanical interlocks. So again, I touched on this before. Um, this is again, just a little bit of a deeper look at the app itself and also the desktop version. We have um, uh, user guides to make this easier for our end users. There's no limit to the amount of devices that can go on this. They could have one, they could have a thousand if they wanted to. And we make it so that there is uh, an administrator that owns uh, all of the devices let's just say it's the owner of the company, he can give everyone else in the company rights to go in and also get the view of um, all of the devices. So he could do that for electricians that service his operation, or if they have electricians on site, um, he can give all of those individuals access to all of these devices. Um, so it allows for uh, not just one person to view it, but multiple people to view and monitor the situation. When we talk about the LEDs, I briefly touched on this, but again, um, when you see green, no surprise, green is green is good. Uh, that's what you want to see primarily. Uh, if you start to see a blinking yellow, that's going to be on the top right fault monitoring. That means that water is building up inside the enclosure. And if you see blinking red, that's usually related to either one of the phases or the ground connection. Um, either you lost your ground on the bottom right or one of your phases is out. We made it blink, so it's just, not just uh, uh, standard, just red um, call out. It will blink and let you know that you have that issue. Um, if you turn the switch into the off position, you will also see the load side, all of those lights go out, meaning that there's no more power going to the switch and you could safely remove the plug from the interlock. So in terms of the plugs and connectors, um, we took a little bit of a simpler approach with this and focused on safety. The plugs and connectors have power indication. Um, so our 30 amp and our 60 amp, 30 amp is available now, 60 amp is coming soon, um, but they have LEDs that scream to the end user, there's power running through me, be careful if you're gonna go up to this device and pull it apart. Ideally, what you want an end user to do is turn off whatever the breaker is and then pull these apart. They have a tendency to arc. Uh, again, you're dealing with 20 amp devices all the way up to 100 amp, so it could happen. Um, and it's very dangerous when a 100 amp device arcs. And if you're holding it to your chest, you're gonna have a, a big problem. So we are starting with this to let people know that maybe you aren't educated in the facility, be careful if you're gonna go up to these devices. If this device is sitting in a puddle, be smart about it. Know that there's electricity running through this, don't just pull it apart. Available today in the plugs and connectors, 30 amp coming soon and 60 amp will also be available in 20 and 100 amp later this year when it comes out. But this is the start of what we're doing with our plugs and connectors. Um, this is also uh, an industry exclusive related to pin and sleeve. Nobody has uh, an indication device like this on their pin and sleeve devices. There are a couple that have disconnect rated devices that have indication, but nothing on their standard series. So everything I've mentioned this a few times, but everything that uh, we're doing and, and the real buzzword that you wanna go in and sell is unplanned downtime. Um, most facilities now are tracking this some way, some way, shape or form. Some of the sophisticated ones have um, plotted data that they're gathering and they're measuring this. Some of the others are just sort of doing it a little bit more relaxed, but everyone understands unplanned downtime. And if you mention this, there's usually a big cost associated with it if they're not operating efficiently. Inform is, and this Inform technology that's in these mechanical interlocks soon to come with more of our devices, it's meant to cut out this unplanned downtime, allow the end users to get ahead of it, not spend all of that cost that they're gonna have to to identify what the issue is, hire an electrician. By the way, while you're doing all of this, whatever line is supposed to be running is completely down and you're losing money that way. This gives you that heads up alert to say, you got a problem, here's what the problem is, go take care of it. So you don't have the unplanned downtime. Push that with your end users, throw out the words like preventative maintenance, predictive maintenance, they're, they're huge buzzwords that 
everyone is looking for now. And uh, there's an intimidation factor with technology and devices, uh, in devices and facilities, mainly in the older facilities, but people are really starting to warm up to trying this. So we have a huge offering now that can make the most sophisticated person that wants Wi-Fi in their facility happy. But also, if somebody just wants to dip their toe and see visual indication, we have that for them as well. Um, so think about this solution. The last thing I'll close out with, or one of the last things, is just quickly running through some common applications. Um, and I've talked a lot about food processing. Uh, whenever I talk about pin and sleeve, I find that this is the direction that my conversations go towards. Um, the food processing in general and the manufacturing of food in the US is continuing to grow. Um, I know that they're struggling a bit with uh, everything going on with COVID, but it's one of those ind industries that yes, was impacted, but uh, we will always need food to eat. We will always need bottling service. There, there's so many pieces of food processing, especially if you bring in food and beverage. Um, and they are all using pin and sleeve devices in some way, shape, or form now. It's easy for them to identify what the plugs and connectors are based on the color. Um, they're robust. They're tough. The washdowns. And again, that portability piece. Um, push the washdowns. Push that NSF rating. And again, um, talk to them about Inform. Uh, some of them are using it, a lot of them aren't, but it's a huge advantage, uh, especially for facilities that are doing regular washdowns and running into issues with their disconnects, their mechanical interlocks filling up with water. Ours probably won't do that, but if you start to run into that problem, you're gonna get the alerts. Nobody else offers that. When we talk a little bit more about uh, food processing, again, um, just that durable connection, just know that these environments are usually harsh. Um, think about wine, wine manufacturing, the acidity that's in the air. Not only can the devices sit on the floor and get dragged around or get stomped on, but the corrosion resistant pins and sleeves that we now have that are nickel plated, all of that plays a part in, in what we're doing. Um, but again, really push NSF, really push the watertight ratings. OEMs is another area that we spend a lot of time focusing on um, with our distributors. Um, these guys aren't just buying one or two plugs and connectors. They're usually buying thousands and they're putting them on cord sets. This, uh, this is a, a bit of a um, doctored up photo, but this is a real life application where if you go to uh, ski facilities, they uh, all of the snow guns that you see usually have some type of a cord extension with uh, a plug, usually a pin and sleeve plug attached to it. They sit in the snow. They are in extremely cold environments. They can get snowed on. They can go into freezing conditions and they'll still operate the way that they need to. But think about your OEMs from a labor saving standpoint. Spend time talking to them about uh, how much quicker it is to install the device. Um, we do have private branded opportunities as well, where um, our Leviton name is on the product, but for a big opportunity, we can put anyone's name on that product if they wanted to change that. Um, and then, of course, I always call out the CAD drawings available. That's a, a big piece. Our website now, and really our marketing team has done a fantastic job of making sure that all of the literature that not just our distributors need, but our actual end users need is located and easy to find on our website. Uh, on every single item page, we have CAD drawings that they could pull and make sure that the product that they're installing works with whatever the OEM happens to be building. Uh, one of the last things I talked through is just manufacturing in general. Um, there's just a lot of dry manufacturing out there that needs a robust, tough product. Um, and these, again, can drop, they can take hits, they can hang accordingly. Um, they are meant to be abused. These environments, whether it's uh, welding operations or even just any outdoor location that these are going to sit in, um, they will survive without an issue. So don't just think food and pro food and bev. Uh, there's a whole lot more out there. Any industrial facility can use pin and sleeve devices. Uh, last, last is uh, temporary power. Usually uh, it's split between um, cam devices and also your pin and sleeve devices. So um, these, again, anytime I think temporary power, I think about events outside. If they're not using cam devices, they're using pin and sleeve devices and they sit in the mud, they sit in the snow. 
They will survive that type of environment. They'll even survive flood type environments, which is why anytime there's usually some type of a disaster relief that goes on, pin and sleeve sales do take some somewhat of a, a lift up just because um, all of the trucks that are out there, whether it's FEMA or some of the bigger guys, are using mechanical interlocks to bring power to a location. So the only other thing I want to cover, and then I promise I'm done talking, is going to be uh, the ordering information. This part numbering system I included in the presentation, this is not a part number that Leviton created. Uh, this is a standard industry part number for pin and sleeve, and it tells a story. So if you ever had to cross anything, um, there's a simple and easy way to do it. The first digit that you see is your number of wires. So it could be three, four, five wires, it's a four wire device. The second two or three digits, that's your amperage, can be 20, 30, 60, 100 amp. The uh, letter that you see is the type of product. That could be a P for plug, C for connector, um, B for inlet. Uh, that one got away from us, but the R is for receptacle. And then also MI is uh, non-fused interlock, MF is fused interlock. The seven is the clock position, which dictates your voltage. And then the W is watertight. That right there is your industry standard part number that everyone follows. Add the LEV, that LEV series, the LEV at the end, and you will get the um, Leviton LEV series pin and sleeve part number. The last piece of information that we have, those last digits are the feature that we offer. So if you put a PI, it's related to plugs and connectors, you will get power indication. If you want that alternate screw clamp uh, that I described with the plugs and connectors, you would put an A at the end. You could also put an S for sensing, that's the, the visual indication, and C for communicating, that's the Wi-Fi versions. So um, promise there's not going to be a test on this, but just, just know that if you have this in your back pocket, it makes it easier to cross. We are obviously also always here to support uh, anything you guys need from uh, crossing items or whatever it may be, but um, just wanted to share this with you guys. And then closing it out, um, again, just a reminder, the three things we focus on, that simplified installation, push that, push the amount of time that you save with the new product versus some of the others that are out there, um, durable connections, so these can take a beating, they're meant to take a beating, uh, those IP ratings, the NSF certification that nobody else has, and then improve safety and productivity, uh, inform technology, get, get that into your head, memorize this little icon here, that I. Um, you're going to see that all over our webpage. You're going to see it in publications um, that we are marketing towards now, forward facing to our end users. And hopefully you're going to have a lot of your end users very soon asking for this product, but push it, educate it. People need to know uh, what it is and how it works. And that's it, everyone. So I, I appreciate the time. I'm going to open it up for a couple of questions and see if anything came through. Um, but uh, if not, I really do appreciate everyone's time. I know um, you guys have probably been through a lot of these presentations, but we're happy to support you however needed. So I'll open it up. Do we have any questions? Yes, we have a few questions. Okay. Uh, so the first is, will the informed technology tell you when you lose a leg of power? Yes. Yep. So phased indication, it will tell you um, not only if you lose a leg, but it will tell you the specific leg that you lost. Okay. And we have, what is the warranty? So the five-year warranty across the board, it's a limited warranty, but we do cover um, the enclosure, the plugs, connectors, everything across the board that I covered has a five-year warranty. And we have, how many people can access the app? So right now it's unlimited. Um, you, like I said, would have an administrator, which is the owner of the app, and he can give as many users as, as he would like, he or she would like. I'm working with a facility that uses disconnects. Is there informed for disconnects? Great question. Um, mechanical interlocks, like I said, you, you kind of have to educate your end users on that. Disconnects, there's a lot more opportunities. Uh, in the next couple months, we are going to launch the same inform technology that I explained in interlocks in our non-metallic disconnects, the 30 amp, that's the high runner. So that's coming very, very soon. All right, and then we have a couple about IP ratings. So can you explain the difference between IP67 and 68 again? Yep, so um, 67 is short-term submersion. So just think of the product sitting in a puddle. 
Um, and then IP68, long-term submersion. That's the industry exclusive that we have. Think about hurricanes or product going underwater for 24 plus hours. As long as it's plugged in or it's uh, connected to a connector or the cap is on, it will survive. All right. And then I think we just have one more. It's could you explain IP69K again and what are the benefits? Sure. Um, so IP69K is a high pressure, high temperature washdown. So think about a pressure washer. Um, that benefits of it, of course, are related to food and bev. Um, that's how a lot of the washdowns are being done now. If you don't have that IP69K rating, the product will be damaged. So we do have it on not just the plugs and connectors, also on the inlets receptacles and the mechanical interlocks. Good questions. And I think that's it. So again, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, Jeff, thank you for, for coordinating and helping us with this one. Um, and let us know from a support standpoint, whatever else you guys need to be successful. You got it, Andrew and team, fantastic job. Uh, so that'll close things out. Again, folks, appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. We'll be sure to communicate the archive out when it's available and be sure to check out Crescent's social media channels on Facebook and LinkedIn, as we'll also be promoting the link there as well. On behalf of Andrew and the entire Leviton and Crescent teams, have a great rest of your day. And we look forward to having you join us on a future webcast in the near future. Thanks, everybody.